Hello again. Okay, we've been we've been working on weighted averages and weighted sums, and so we're going to talk about barcodes and check digits uh, because that also is a weighted sum. So a barcode, of course, you've seen them everywhere. That's the little this thing. It's on everything you buy, pretty much, or on the packaging for it. And this is kind of you know it tells the company. Well, first of all, it tells what company it's from. It tells what product it is. You know, all these numbers mean stuff. So if we look at it, the first, like, six numbers or so, so I'm going to change this. Well, first, we'll talk about the parts of a barcode. Then we're going to talk about how to verify whether or not it's a valid barcode. So these first numbers right here, this is the manufacturer number. Oh, that's hard to see. Okay, let me just right here. Manufacturer. So that's that's the company that that sold this product. So if you go to Office Depot and you buy a bunch of stuff that's Office Depot brand, they're going to all start with those same six numbers. The next set of numbers, I'll do this in yellow. This part is the product. That's the thing itself. Product number. So in their system, if they have it, this is from a lotion bottle. So this is A La Maison is the company, de Provence. And it's coconut cream, moisturizing, shea butter, and argan oil, hand and body lotion. So this 01158 would be the body lotion, this particular one. And the, the red one, the 817252, that would be A La Maison de Provence. So that's the company name. And then you notice there's that little two left all by itself on the end. Let me find a bright color. Da da da, this right here. That's our check digit. We're going to use that number to verify whether or not it's a valid barcode. Because um, if, you're, if you have somebody who is selling fake items, if you say, like, say you go to a place in Harlem, not Harlem, Harwin Street, is it here in Houston? So say you go to a place down there, and not that they would ever have fakes, but, you know, just saying. If you buy some Air Jordans down there, well, it's going to come in a box. But if it comes in a box, it might even have, like, the Air Jordan symbol on it. It might look legit. But if it doesn't have a barcode somewhere, people are going to get a little nervous, right? Because they're going to be like, wait a minute, normally there's a barcode. So if you're going to sell fake things, a lot of times people will put fake barcodes on there because the consumer normally doesn't know the difference anyway. So you have to be able to check if this is actually a fake or not. And it's not, it's not something that we as consumers necessarily do every time we go to the store, but if you worked for, like, Customs and Border Patrol, let's see, do they do customs? Yeah, so they would, they would sometimes check this to make sure that the products that are being imported are what they say they are, make sure they're legit. So, okay, so we have this barcode, and here I'll show you another example of a barcode. So this is off of a Kleenex box. It's the Kroger brand. So then, same thing, the first six digits, this would be Kroger. The next five would be this type of Kleenexes, so it's super ultra cheap. And this one is our check digit. So, okay, let me go to the next page. Da, da, da. I'm going to insert my lotion picture again. Okay, so we're going to use this barcode, and we want to check it. Maybe I'll put it over here. So we want to check, and we want to see if this is actual, like, this is legit. Now, probably somebody is not going to fake a, you know, 5 or $10 bottle of lotion, but, you know, pretend it was an expensive one. Okay, so the way we do that, there's a there's something that there's a system set in place, and there's a reason this is in the weighted averages section of this uh, unit. We're gonna take, change colors. We're gonna take these numbers, and we're gonna look at them. We're gonna leave the two for now. That's this last one is our check digit, so we're gonna not look at that yet. So we're just gonna we're gonna take these and we're gonna rewrite them. I usually rewrite them vertically because it's just easier for me to think about. So I have an 817. So 8, oh, that's, I can't see that. Let's do this. 
zero one one five eight. So A172520158. Okay, I have that. That's my number. The first 11 digits, not the last one. So first 11. So now the system that I'm going to use, I'm going to use some weights. So over here I'm going to put weights. And this is kind of clever. I'm not sure who came up with this, but hats off to them. So it's going to be 3, 1, 3, 1, 3, 1, repeating. So I'm going to put a 3 here, a 1 here, a 3 here, a 1 here. 3, 1, 3, 1, 3, 1, 3, all the way down. Now I'm going to multiply them. So I'm going to multiply this. That gives me 24. That gives me a 1, 21, 2, 5 times 3 is 15, 2 times 1 is 2, 0 times 3 is 0, 1, 3, 5, 24. Okay, I have some numbers. Now I'm going to add them all up. Okay, when I add all of these up, I get a 98. This is important. This is how we're going to check the check digit. Check the check, okay. So my sum is 98. So I'm going to look at my 98. The check digit should be the number that it takes to go from whatever this number is. So from here, I want to make it end in zero. So I want to round it up. Round up. Not the weed killer. So if I round up from here, I get 100. And then if I subtract these two, so 100 minus 98, it gives me a 2. So the 2 is the number that it would take to make this end in a 0, right? So from 98 to the next thing that ends in 0. So my check digit should be a 2. So if I look up here, oops, my check digit is a 2, so it's valid. Are you sufficiently confused yet? Okay, let's try it again so we'll be more confused. Okay, let's try our Kleenex box. Okay, so here's our Kleenex box. So I'm going to write the numbers down. So I'm going to use these numbers, right? I'm not going to look at the 6. The 6 is my check digit. So I want that's what I'm going to use to check whether this is valid. So let me write these down. Now I'm going to write the weights. So 3, 1, 3, 1, 3, 1, 3, 1, 3. Uh-oh, so I did something wrong. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 7, 8, 9, 10. Oh, I missed a number. Okay, see? This is not good. Do I have not enough? Let's see. Oh, I skipped my zero. Just a second. Oh, no, I don't want to do that. I'll put... Ah. There we go. Crisis averted. Okay, so... And then I ended with a three. So now I'm going to multiply. So zero times three is zero. One, three, one, three, zero... 24, 2, 3, 0, and 27. And now I'm going to add them up. Okay, so if I add those up, it gives me 64. Pull this up here. So if I round 64 up to the next, you know, to the next multiple of 10, I get, it would be a 70, right? round to the next multiple of 10. So then I take 70, I subtract my 64. That gives me what my check digit should be. So in this case, my check digit should be a six. That's an ugly six, six, da, da, da. That's my check digit. And in fact, it is a six if I look over here. So these super cheap Kleenex boxes are actually what they say they are. So that's, that's how we use check digits on barcodes.